All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. I'm joined today by Jennifer Sino Tucker, who is in Long Island in New York. How are you doing, Jennifer? I'm doing great, thanks. It's sunny here in New York, though. <laughs> oh, good, 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 good for you. Well, New York needs some sunshine. Um, you know, after being through such a such a tough period lately. Okay, so um, you know, Jennifer is involved in the real estate industry, and what we wanted to talk about today was um, basically how you can use systems to. Um, putting the right systems in place so you can really put your business on a path to prosperity. So, so Jennifer, when you talk about um, systems, what do you mean by it? Because systems could be actual, um, you know, software systems. It could be process systems. Yeah, I, I would say it's a little bit of both. Uh, my mm -hmm. approach to business com comes with a little bit of approach. Uh, uh, I think my approach is more of getting my time management first. That would be one of my first systems. Getting your time management in place, I think, is important. Um, as a single, as a single mom, I've learned to um, really hone in on those systems and my time management because it's been pretty important to balance, you know, family life along with, um, sure. um, you know, business as well. But um, the systems also can be more of um, an integral part of who you are as well and, and bringing your personality into the system too. Yeah. So let's talk about time management for a start, because I think, uh, you know, everybody knows that they should manage their time better and that they should be organized, but very few people know really how to do it. And obviously, um, you know, because of your situation, uh, you've had to learn how to do this really well. So everybody gets service. So your clients get service and let's face it, and your, and your kids and your family also, you know, get, uh, get served um, properly. So what is some of your advice about really good time management for those people who maybe aren't so good at it? You know, it's really just a matter of block planning everything out and saying that you're going to do, you know, this task for this time period. For me, doing something for an hour is too long. So I, I just, I give my attention span just kind of goes away. So blocking out half hour increments where I was going to prospect, where I was going to follow up on leads and deals, um, giving the 30 minute window was, was what worked for me. Again, making that an hour looking at it on paper became like too much and overwhelming mm -hmm. for me. So I would say, know your personality and don't overextend mm -hmm. your time. Like to call, you know, leads for two, three hours, th that just seems a little unrealistic, but someone might have the personality to do it. So match your personality with your timing. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, it's an excellent point for people to take away is understand who you are. Because yes, if you're somebody who works best in 30 minute increments, well, then don't set yourself two hour tasks because mm -hmm. you're probably, you know, by the end of the two hours, you're probably watching ESPN at that stage or something. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, so, so understanding yourself and maybe if you're somebody who can devote an hour or two to something but needs complete, uh, you know, complete silence and to be undisturbed, mm. then you need to make sure that the people around you understand that uh, and that you can organize that into your day, that it's okay to block off an hour or two hours and be completely undisturbed. Uh, that's, that's realistic or feasible. So yeah, I think that's a fantastic point. I would say the other thing to add on to that is don't be afraid to reward yourself for completing the task in the 30 minutes or the two hours that you allowed yourself to do it. That was the reward system for me. And it was just something small. Maybe it was, you know, a tiny piece of chocolate that I allowed myself for the, for the afternoon, for those 30 minutes of making calls. Yeah, I think that's a, I, and I think that's a great point. And I interviewed somebody a while back who, uh, you know, who did a lot of prospecting and, and he said that he had two award system. He had one, if he prospected that day and he was successful and he you know, set up some meetings or whatever, he would award himself with a movie that night or something. Mm -hmm. If, if he did everything he possibly could that day, but was unsuccessful in meeting, but he felt that he had actually done everything, then he gave himself some ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> and I like he, those two rewards. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So time management is, is one factor. What is, another, what is another system that you should, a part of the system that you should look at? You know, just the prospecting in business and in mm -hmm. real estate itself is, is really important. Obviously, we're lead generators 
Um, so prospecting for me became um, one of my systems. And the part that I liked prospecting was really honing in on networking with other like-minded people who were also entrepreneurs and business owners um, who wanted to grow and be, be around other successful people. The networking was really key for me, joining your, you know, being the rock star within your community, mm -hmm. wherever that might be, um, is really important. So that system of just networking everywhere I possibly can, the chamber and networking groups, um, my daughter's, you know, softball team, those kind of, that kind of system, um, is really a, what's going to set you on a pro path to prosperity as well. Yeah, and I think those are great points again, because you know, a lot of people obviously don't like prospecting, even though they know they need to do it and it's essential to what they're doing. So I like what you're saying there about what you said about becoming a rock star. So it's not just about networking, right, but it's about providing um, value to other people for people starting to see you as a, as a trusted advisor or somebody to go to. But mm -hmm. to do that, you obviously have to provide value to other people as well, right? Well, yeah, it's where we need to focus in on the relationship as, a, mm -hmm. as opposed to the transaction. Um, yeah. When we hone in on that relationship and seeing what service that we can provide others in our, in our fields or, or uh, clients in and of themselves, we, we're going to see uh, the growth. And for me, it was a tremendous amount of growth. Once I were, it was able to let go of the money and not focus mm -hmm. on the transaction and really focus on how I can service my clients. Yeah. So those are two excellent points of so the time management, the prospecting, the networking, really you know, um, focusing on your networking. And tell me, is there anything you have done um, during this lockdown period or pandemic, different type of networking or maybe focused or expanded some more virtual networking that you've been doing? Um, I, you know, I became, you know, we've been on lockdown. I want to say it's now about 12. We're just starting to come out of the covid um, yeah. chaos, as I call it here in New York. We're just able to start our real estate really fully. But I kept up with my networking group. We still met on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. um, and I just reached out to all those old people um, who were in who were in my my circle, sphere of influence, and just mm -hmm. said, how can I help you? What, is there anything I can do to help you at this time? I was able to mail out postcards um, and just handwritten notes to past clients. Let them know that I'm here. Is there anything that I can do? You know, I didn't know if someone needed me now or later, mm -hmm. and whether that was bringing them groceries or, or right. you know, or helping to go get something. That was really my goal into just contacting people during, during this, these 12 weeks in the pandemic. Yeah. And I think it's a, that's a great example of the fact that although obstacles are placed in front of you, it's not an excuse to just go, oh, well, there's nothing I can do. I'm just going to wait for everything to open up. But you just get creative in, in how, you can, how you can keep things going, how you can keep connections going. And again, it comes back to offering service and not expecting reward immediately. Trauma will make us step out of our comfort zone. And that's mm -hmm. exactly what COVID has done for a lot of people, I think. You either stayed still and in place, or you were able to really catapult your business and take off and realize I could still do this. I was one yeah. of those people who said, I could still do this and just turn on a zoom call and still meet people and still, um, um, do transactions, you know, virtually I was able to list 10 homes and put four on the market during these 12 weeks. So mm -hmm. I'm pretty, pretty happy that that's happened and pretty happy that people were able to trust me All a lot mm -hmm. of all, I would say primarily of those 10 Oh, six of them were referrals. Right. So, so yeah. the other and four. Yeah, so I mean, then that's a that's an incredible um, statistic, which is fantastic. So, so, um, so what else? Obviously, you you know, you kept up your networking, you got creative, you kept your business flowing. What what other systems are you using? Um, well, just like tech, my besides technology, mm -hmm. obviously, in in my book, become a rock star real estate agent. Yeah. I talk about. Um, you know, choosing a social media platform. For me, it, it was just one. That's all I could handle. Everything else was right. too overwhelming. So if you could choose one social media platform, I know, I know a lot of people now are saying at least three. Um, I'm just not that social media friendly. <laughs> it's not, it's <laughs> not my major platform, but it was definitely a way for me to get listings and keep in touch with others that are out there. So social media, obviously, is a way for us to prospect too.
Yeah, but I like what you were saying about the choosing one because yes, I know people recommend you need to be on all the platforms and all of this, and you have to. But but as you said, I mean, sometimes it's not easy to do multiple things well, uh, and sometimes it's better to focus and say, okay, well, the majority of my target audience is here, so I'm going to be as really, I'm going to be as good as I can be here. Yes, as opposed to trying to be mediocre in a lot of places. Yeah, I yeah, exactly. That was my philosophy is to choose one, be the best I can at it and um and and just take off from there. You know, I was able to categorize, categorize a lot of those sphere of people in my sphere and a lot of past customers um so I could see when they were posting and then make comments obviously and keep keep the keep my face present in front of them. Yeah. And then how much does technology play in how you organize your your systems and your processes? Um, that's a really good question. Um, I mean, I have hired a part-time person to really um, take that on because it's not my favorite thing to do. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I come from the mindset that I treat my real estate as my business. I'm not just yeah. a realtor. I'm really an entrepreneur and a business mm -hmm. owner. So the tasks that I am not good at, I'd rather resource out um, as opposed to do them on my own. So yeah, so I, I mean, I, attention to it, I would say maybe one to two hours, you know, um, uploading new content, finding new content to post on social media. So is it big? No, I want to say about 10 to 15 percent of part of mm -hmm. a part of a, I guess you would say my business comes into social media. Yeah, and I think that's a you touch, touched on a really good point there because, I mean, a lot of entrepreneurs are small businesses. They try to do everything themselves. But however, I think the, the great thing is nowadays we live in this fantastic uh, kind of gig economy and also uh, a global gig economy mm -hmm. where you can, if you can use tools like Upwork, like we often use it, where you need a specialist, somebody who is expert on something to do a few things for you. You're never going to need them full time. And you may not even need them every week. You may need mm -hmm. them occasionally. And so to be able to go out find an expert in that area, contract them. And if it's something that can be done virtual, well, then you have the basically resources across the globe to choose for that can meet your, um, you know, can meet your budget. I mean, I've hired part-time and full-time assistants for my business as well, but I do believe that more of hiring more of the expert in those areas mm -hmm. is a lot more cost effective to, to business, my business at least as well. Yeah, and and I think, and also I think business in general, there's a lot of things that are getting so specialized that mm -hmm. you do need somebody who's an expert in that area. But like I said, you may never, you may never need that person full time. You may never exactly. need that person even every week. So to be able to leverage those variable resources like that is is incredibly, uh, yep. incredibly helpful. Yeah, in the beginning, as new entrepreneurs, so when we get into the business, we don't have a lot of marketing money either, mm -hmm. right, to spend on yeah. some of this. So we're leveraging our time for money. And one of the things that I also teach, one of the systems was, you know, talk going back to prospecting was door knocking. I mean, that's the most easiest way for you to get in front of people real quickly um, without nice. spending a lot of money. Yeah. And again, I mean, obviously that requires uh, that requires kind of getting into the mindset that I'm going to go out and I'm going to do mm -hmm. this. And it may seem a little old school, but I mean, it's obviously highly effective. Yeah, yeah, and there you go, block time managing your time, uh, time blocking um, everything for yourself as well. <laughs> um, and then, so, so, what are what are some other little pieces of advice that you would give people if they want to become a rock star realtor or just a rock star in their in their business in general? Again, I think the main thing, you know, and we kind of touched upon it, is really focusing on the relationship as opposed to the transaction. Um, when we see the people and mirror those who are in front of us. Um, really pay attention to their personality profile. Mm -hmm. I like the disc, the disc personality profile so that we're yeah. able to speak and talk to like those who look, uh, look like us and talk like us and we're able to speak their language. So meeting your clients where they're at, at in their personality is pretty huge. Um, you know, like I just said, we all want to work with people who, who look like us, talk like us so that we feel that they trust us. And that would be one other thing I, I would say, understand the personality profiles in the disc or some other type of personality profiling so that you can target people who, who want to work with you basically. 
Yeah, no, I think that's an excellent point. And I think, think uh, sometimes people don't spend enough time figuring out who they are themselves before they mm-hmm. start worrying about, um, you know, other people. And I think that's a great point uh, to know the personality types that you click with, but also to understand that different personality types need to be communicated with differently. You, you have people yeah. who are very relational. You have people who are very analytical. If you try to be very relational with an analytical person or very analytical with a relational person, it doesn't always work that well. Yeah, exactly right. So we're really matching, you know, people who who, who mostly are like us. And you bring, bring up a good point that we get to know a lot more about ourselves and who we mm-hmm. are. So I would say the next point would really be what that's going to help us do is discover your why as to why you're really doing what you're doing. Why did you go into real estate? Why are you going into business? What's your purpose? Yeah. And by the way, I love that you brought that up because I've been talking about that with a lot of people recently. And it's a, it's kind of one of those obvious things that you think about, hang on a second, that's really obvious, but a lot of people don't think about it in terms of, yes, why am I doing what I'm doing? Mm-hmm. I mean, if you ask most people and say, why are you doing what you're doing? Well, they say, oh, well, you know, it's a good job. It pays well. It's got good benefits. But you say, but, but that's not enough. Why? Yeah. Why? Money is always a byproduct of why mm-hmm. we do what we do. It's never, never our true true why. I mean, it really comes from a source deep inside of us. Yeah. And if you don't, if you never discover that, then you, uh, you know, then you will kind of drift a little bit. But also when the going gets tough, you won't have anything to draw on in terms Mm. of of really what's inside you wanting to do this. And if you just, and then, and the other part is maybe you discover you don't want to do this. Which is, yes. which is just equally valuable. Exactly. And there's no, there's no you know, right or wrong, wrong why, I don't think. I think it's very individualized to each person too. So. Yeah. And that's why I was just saying, yeah, f- figure out why you're doing what you're doing. Um, figure out where, you want, where you're headed towards and what your goals are for what you're doing. And, and I think then you start to get a lot more clarity. Yeah, for me, it was, um, I, I saw, joined a YouTube group with John and Missy Butcher, and there's this a life book class, and it really talked about the 12 different areas of your life, um, which to me are summed up in three specific areas, more of a um, emotional, spiritual, and physical um, realm of who you are, which is why I'm in my book, I really talk about this holistic approach to business, mm-hmm. um, treating your mind, body, and soul in order for your business to grow. Um, so the discovering of the why and who you are and why you do what you do really leads you to a life of fulfillment and happiness. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. And I think that if there's one thing that's come out of this crisis is hopefully it's given people a little more time to think about their lives holistically as opposed to just be on that uh, you know, just on that track and running as fast as they can. Mm. So hopefully people have had an opportunity and have realized that, you know, maybe there are different ways of configuring your lives. Maybe there are different things you want to do. Maybe there's different approaches. Maybe you want to fine tune some things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm sure you're going to find out where some of those smaller rewards might be as well, or even bigger ones, vacations or, you know, playing an instrument, something like that as well. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Listen, Jennifer, this has been fantastic. Um, All of Jennifer's information will be in her contributor bio below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself, what you do and how they can learn more. Oh, sure. Well, oh, thanks again for having me on, I guess. I, re- I guess I really appreciate it. Would love to give all of your audience a free download of my book at rockstaragenttraining.com. If you go to that website, they can download the book for free. But um you know, I'm just looking to take this real estate game to a whole nother level as I'm beginning to invest in other properties. And, and if you're starting on day one or you're on day 101, um, you know, there's always business to be made for some um, closings are going to happen every day. So just keep moving forward. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I've seen it even around here. I've seen this, this, uh, even during this period, um, the area that I go for running on, I've seen houses be listed and sold. Um, all mm-hmm. during this period so yeah absolutely awesome yeah all right listen thank you very much jennifer my name is john golden sales pop online sales magazine pipeliner crm see you all for another expert interview really soon thank you yeah.